freaks and geeks, welcome to another episode of Geek Out for a Minute. We are coming at you here from the kingdom of Bahrain. <laughs> I'm your host, Rocky Reese, and today we're going to go over Venom. So let's cue that music. So Venom was released actually on October 5th and we're actually in October 20th so you're getting this a little bit late and the reason for that is because there's certain times we get off and sometimes we don't so we're not able to always see the movies exactly when they come out. However, I did see this last week and I just wasn't, uh, for some reason the audio wasn't on on the microphone so now I'm using a new camera so I got my... Uh, Canon 7 uh, T7i, so it's got a microphone, it's got a Rode microphone, so a lot better, a lot better equipment, a lot better products, hopefully, right? All right, so um, Venom. So Venom is directed by Ruben Fleischer, and Ruben Fleischer has done uh, movies like Zombieland, right, which is a good movie, but he also did Gangster Squad. Ah, so um, now this uh, movie was actually given a really bad review from Rotten Tomatoes, which is, I think it's sitting at around 30% on Rotten Tomatoes. That's really bad. So I already didn't have much expectations for it because for me, there's no Spider-Man. So I just figured like, I don't, it just didn't make sense to me, right? So let's talk about the cast and then we'll get into the movie here. All right, so the cast, you got Tom Hardy, who's one of my favorite actors out there. Now he's playing Eddie Brock slash Venom. Uh, you also got Michelle Williams, you know, another very talented actress, and she's playing Anne Wayne. And then you got Riz, Riz Ahmed, who's playing uh, Carlton Drake uh, slash Riot. And uh, then we'll talk about this other one in the end because I don't really want to get into it because it's a spoiler. So this is going to be spoiler free. And then what I'll do is I'll simply put a disclaimer up to let you know that it is now spoiler talk. So... But when that comes on, I'll give you a heads up. If you guys haven't seen Venom, then you don't have to watch the whole thing through. But once the spoiler uh, comes up, just make sure that you guys either pause it and then come back to it later. Or, you know, um, if you care, if you don't care about this, having it spoiled to you, then, you know, well, then watch on. Other than that, you've been warned. All right. So uh, let's get on to my, ex my expectations, first of all. Okay. Um, actually... Let me start off with the the creators of Venom, and this is created by uh, David McLeany and also Todd McFarlane, who uh, Todd McFarlane has done Spawn, and he's also directing the upcoming Spawn, which how, I don't know, but anyways, uh, we'll talk about that another day. So let's talk about my expectations for this movie. So my expectations for this were actually pretty damn low. Um, I actually didn't expect anything good to come out of this because they didn't have Spider-Man. The whole situation between them and Marvel right now, Marvel and Sony are able to share Spider-Man. But with the conditions is that the Spider-Man standalone movies are under the supervision of Marvel. Okay. Now, they're still owned by Sony, but Marvel wants to keep an eye on it. So Marvel obviously having you know a great track record, you know, well, there you go. Anyway, so one of the one of the deals was that they wanted to do their own standalone kind of like Spider Universe, Spider Man Universe. So who would they use? Well, that would be Venom. So Venom now they they said there's not going to be a Spider Man. So this is like an origin story for Venom without Spider Man in it. So they did take a lot of liberties on this. So um, let's move along to, uh, let's see. First of all, let's talk about comics. So if you guys saw the Spider Man 3, that is almost pretty spot on, almost, almost spot on with like how Venom's origin is. Um, however, um, there's also another, another version of it. And I don't know if it's Flash Thompson who has the Spider-Man suit. Well, he's Agent Venom, but they have a different story where I guess it's not involved with the Spider-Man, which is pretty weird. Um, but now I'm going to move on to my expectations of the movie. I said that a few times already. Um, okay, so my expectations for this movie were pretty low. There was no Spider-Man. Uh, they had mentioned that it was going to be a rated PG-13 rating. Now, I really wanted to see a rated R version of this because it's Venom. I mean, he's kind of a vile creature. And even though 
it's not really what you see in the comic books. I just thought they would actually take it a little bit further. But with the PG-13 rating, it was at, you know, at the end of Homecoming, which actually I think would be either home, Homecoming, not Homecoming, I'm sorry, the Spider-Man um, Far From Home or the Infinity War 2, uh, I think after that, then Marvel will no longer have a hold on the rights to, do, to share them. So they might revert back to Sony. And if that happens and they wanted to introduce that Spider-Man into this Venom universe, then it would have to be PG-13. So that's why they did that. So day one, Venom makes 10 million opening day, breaking the box office record for opening day on October. So they killed it with that. Okay. Then they break another record for being the highest grossing film opening day domestically in October. And they opened up at 80 million domestic. This is their weekend box office. Now, worldwide, it's at $2 million worldwide. So, I mean, dude, they're killing it. Nobody cared about what the critics had to say about this. People wanted to see Venom. And obviously, it shows you that the marketing did something very well with this. And that's to get people interested in Venom, a Venom without Spider-Man at that. So, and this is the wide audience, so that's really good. So, with them breaking all these records, okay, at only a hundred million dollar budget. Now, I know you guys say only, right? Well, for movie superheroes, that's kind of like the middle, right? You're kind of hitting like a hundred to a hundred and fifty, and then you get others that are two to two fifty. You know, so the ones that are spending that much money, they're kind of hoping to hit anywhere from 700 million to maybe a billion dollar uh, um, profit. Well, it's not really profit, right? It's just making like overall, okay? But this one already at 200 million on their opening weekend, that's very good news for Venom and Sony must be ecstatic about it, okay? So now let's get into the uh, story for this, okay? Now, I'm not, again, I'm not going to get into any spoilers here. But I'm just going to basically tell you what's in the, basically, the, the trailers already. So you already know that this is some form of experimentation with, like, kind of like an alien, as they like to say, symbiote. It's a symbiote, or, or as the average person would say, symbiote, you know, because, you know, it's going to have a symbiotic relationship. But they say, it's a symbiote. Like, you sound like a douche, not a douche. Anyways, uh, so, uh, so they're getting these things and they're trying to experiment on human beings. And, of course, some way, somehow, I'm not going to reveal it here, Venom or Eddie Brock gets the Venom symbiote. The story, how this formed out, uh, again, I'm not going to go into details here, but the first act seemed a little bit choppy. And what I mean by that is that it looks like they wanted a to talk more about the relationship that um, Eddie Brock has and how he does his, his business, which is, you know, basically as a, as a journalist. And if you've seen, like, the comic books before or you've seen, like, uh, the older, older Sp Spider-Man, then you know that Eddie Brock's kind of a scumbag, right? He's kind of a scumbag. And in this, uh, in this movie, I think they were having a problem on figuring out how to make him a scumbag. So they added a little something, which I thought was pretty cool. I thought, I thought that worked for Eddie Brock because he wasn't so much of a scumbag. He still had a scumbag tendency because, you know, he did that particular thing. But it wasn't enough to say, hey, he's a villain. So they're not making him a villain in this movie, which he is a villain to Spider-Man in the comics until later on. Okay, so it did feel a little bit choppy. So what it seemed like to me is that they said, hey man, I love the cut and all that, but you know what? You're going to have to shorten it up because people are not going to be patient to see the Venom. And they're not wrong because one of my biggest fears when I saw the trailer is that it, I felt like Venom was probably only going to be like in 10 minutes of the movie at the end. But we actually got more Venom than I anticipated, which was pretty cool. So I did enjoy that, that they did that. Um, and sometimes you start seeing things that kind of take a little bit too long and they shorten it up enough so that you get to Venom faster. So even though it's choppy, I didn't mind it because I wanted to see Venom, <laughs> you know, I just wanted to get to the Venom part. 
So I'm glad they actually kind of did that. And if you watch this movie, I think you'll appreciate that as well. Where you don't want to take, have the whole movie be about the love interest and his work and then only get 10 minutes of Venom. That's not what we want to see. Okay, so now um, the one of the things that I really enjoyed about this movie was the Venom and Eddie relationship. Because in the comics, he just refers to himself as in third person and he also says we, us. Like he refers to him and the symbiote, but he doesn't talk to the symbiote. Um, at least in the comics that I read, they weren't like that. And maybe they've done it in the future, co in the comics now, but uh, I'm not really sure about that. Uh, but the relationship was really funny and very interactive. You know, they kind of antagonize each other. Like, you know, they kind of push each other around. Which I thought was really fun aspect. And I actually liked it a lot more than I thought I was going to. I thought I was going to reject it, but actually, I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, let me get to the special effects. The special effects, to me, they look really good. Um, I actually like the special effects they had on Venom more than they did on Riot, but it wasn't too bad. It didn't take me out of the movie. The, like I said, the special effects were fine. So I enjoyed it. I, it didn't take me out. Now, let me get to the villain. So the villain in Riz Ahmed, um, you know, I said this on my other video, and I've seen Riz Ahmed in a few movies, and for me, a lot of people... A lot of people say he's such a great actor. And to me, there really hasn't been any movie that I've seen where he stands out. If you guys know any movies that I can watch and see like Riz Ahmed as a top-notch actor, let me know in the comments below so I can check those out. I just haven't seen any standout performances myself. Uh, maybe I need to review more of his work. But from what I saw him in, in Rogue One, you know, it just really didn't stand out for me. Um, but seeing him here... I liked his character, however, it wasn't a villain that stood out, and probably because you really don't get into the philosophy of what he's trying to do, and, you know, they do talk about that in the movie, but it's just so brief and so narrow that I can't imagine how somebody would have a philosophy behind all that, you know, especially at the extent that they were taking it. So that's one of my, my regrets on it. Maybe if they would have got a little bit more into the philosophy, explained his character better now at this point i'm going to get into the spoilers here so if you guys haven't seen the movie hit pause come back after you watch it trust me the video will still be here unless youtube decides to shut everything down okay so you've been warned spoiler alert coming here all right so one of the things that i wanted to talk about that initially that makes eddie brock into the scumbag thing and i wanted to get into more detail but Obviously, I didn't want to put that in the non-spoiler section. So, so for now, this is the thing. One of the things he does in the Spider-Man version of it, you know, he basically doctors or photoshops Spider-Man stealing money. And he says, hey, Jonah Jameson, here is the picture you wanted to see. And he got it. He gets the job and everything. But then Peter exposes him for doctoring that, that specific picture. So, he gets exposed, he gets fired, you know, basically because the integrity of the, I think the Daily Bugle, uh, is in question now because of him, him doctoring these pictures. You know, so he gets fired and then he has a run in a bad luck. He realizes that his girl is not sticking around because of what he did. Now, in the movie, they made a reference to the incident that happened to you in New York. It was not taken in place in New York, but... You know, then they don't go into detail of what it is, right? And that could be possibly it. But he's still doing his whole, like, you know, journalistic, you know, kind of like a YouTube channel or something backed by a company. Who knows? But um, he basically starts going into his girlfriend's computer, right? And starts getting all the info from the, from the bad guys. And that showed me, dude, that is such a scumbag thing to do, right? Like, not only, I mean, one thing would be is like if he was like, hey, man, who the hell are you talking to, right? Like, if it's just like, you know, trying to see if she's talking to other dudes. But that's not the case, man. You're stealing classified information that she has as a lawyer. And, you know, you're just basically screwing her career over. So she ends up getting fired, and that's what causes them to break up, which I thought was a really good angle to take. Uh, so that's it. making him a scumbag in that sense I thought was really good. Now, um, the other thing, too, is that, again, for me, um, one of the things that 
because one of the things that separated Carnage from Venom was that Carnage can do all these blade type weapons where Venom can only do blunt objects. And, you know, when you saw that doing it, when you saw like um, that particular uh, symbiote doing it, I was like, man, it takes away from that oh shit factor of Carnage. And I was hoping that they wouldn't do that, but they did it anyways, and I just kind of hope it has that oh shit factor regardless. All right, now, um, let me get to the end credit scene, and then we'll uh, top this off and finish it up. Uh, the end credit scene has, well, there was two end credit scenes, which was, number one, was the, the Carnage one, right? Now, I thought it was pretty damn cheesy, right? Because some people said that a lot of people that were commenting when I saw it on Twitter were saying that the end credit scene was lit. It was fire. Oh, my God. OMG, right? But when I saw it, even though I, I, I was thinking to myself already, there's one of two reasons on why this particular end credit scene could be fire. Would be number one is if you do a Spider-Man reference. Or if number two, you end up doing a Carnage reference. So I had a feeling it was going to be a Carnage reference, right? Because Woody Harrelson was on the cast, but didn't mention who he was. So I kind of figured if we haven't seen him throughout the movie, it's going to be a fucking Carnage. And it was just so cheesy when he just says at the end, you know, when I get out and I'm going to get out, there's going to be Carnage. And uh, look, man, it's just... Two on the nose because he said carnage. He didn't have to say that, you know? Like, oh, man, it's just kind of cheeseball. And the wig, oh, my God, it looks like a carrot top slash, you know, sideshow bob type thing. And it just, it was laughable. It was totally laughable. So, I mean, look, some people may like that because it makes a reference to the comics and the carnage. And you know what? That's great. That's a great setup for the next movie. But I thought it was kind of cheesy, and you didn't have to say Carnage. You could have just said his name, and everything would have been fine. Which is, you know, uh, Cletus Cassidy, that would have been fine, but whatever. And then they showed a uh, the end credit scene for Into the Spider-Verse. And where I was a little bit confused, but I, thought, I think they were using it to promote the movie. It's going to be, it's an animated movie that's going to be out in theaters. And it's going to be about the Spider-Verse. So if you haven't seen it, check it out. Um, I don't want to get too much into that one because I want to save that talk for another day. Other than that, guys, I really enjoyed this film. I had a good time with it. Is it going to blow your mind? No, but it is a lot of fun to watch. Seeing the dynamic between Venom and Eddie was really, really interesting. So, guys, tell me, what did you think? Look, guys, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, what are you waiting for? Make sure you hit subscribe. Make sure you hit that bell so you get notified every time we put a video out. Other than that, guys, look, share, discuss, subscribe, and don't forget to spread the word. Thank you guys for watching. See you guys next time. Bye.